by the king, our everlasting God. We ask in Jesus' mighty name that bless us with understanding, even as we go through your word, that your word prosperous as it has been testified in the word. Be glorified, be praised, and be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Today I just want to answer some that is bothering the mind of many people because what is going on right now, if you don't understand the last days of the scripture, you will not understand what is happening. And if you don't know God, also you have problem. You remember the Bible says, in all your gettings, get understanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So we, we, we need to understand God. And seasons of not even understand what is going on. First of all, I want to answer this first question. Um, many people are saying that what is happening, the Antichrist has come. And the Antichrist has started operating because they believe that the virus is man made. And because of that, the Antichrist is working against beliefs and all beliefs that we say in the world. But I want to help you with the scripture. Let's go to Thessalonians. Thessalonians. I want to help you. Thessalonians chapter number one. Are you ready? Now let's go to Thessalonians chapter number one. Second Thessalonians, sorry. Second Thessalonians. Or read I'm going to two, chapter two. Now we will see two brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter. As from us, as that that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship. So he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Amen. Amen. Now I want to jump to verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity, iniquity, do it already work. shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. Amen. Now let me explain something important here to you. Now Paul was addressing the church of Thessalonians. They were confused about the coming of the Lord so many, 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 many years ago. They were confused about the coming of the Lord and because you know the time we believers say that he's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Now, because we say it's coming soon, so many people are confused. They don't know how soon he is coming. And uh, Peter explained something important to us and helped us to understand something. Peter. Now, Peter said, thousand years is one day before the Lord. Thousand years is one day before the Lord. So if God says it's soon, it's so. So if it, in, in the mind of God, if God says, in the mind of God, let's say, it's seven days, it's going to be 7,000 years on the earth. So it's soon to God. 
So when Jesus is saying that I'm coming soon, I'm coming soon, or reveal to the man of God, or reveal to the preachers, and say, I'm coming soon, I'm coming soon, that soon to God is so, some days, but soon to man, some years. So we get to a church of Thessalonians who were confused about the coming of the Lord, and they thought that it was so sharp and quick as they were thinking of. And then Paul had to address them and explain to them that let no man deceive you by any means, for the day shall not come except something happen. He said that except there comes a falling away first, that the man of sin reveal the son of perdition. So in other words, there's a self that can fall away, falling away. Then the son of perdition will come. Now the son of perdition is the manifestation of the fullness of the devil taking control over the air. That's what we call Antichrist. So it means that he would not come until something happens. And after that happens, then he could come. Now, what are we talking about here? A time is coming, and the science proves that it's so soon that each and every believer needs to get ready. Now, how do you get ready? You get ready by changing your mind and walking in the righteousness of God and putting into action what you learn from the churches and from the word of God. Put it into action. Because God says that I'm coming to check a church without blemish or spot. You see that? Mm -hmm. So now what is happening here is that God is going to do something. It says that this except that comes a falling away. It means that the Lord will come and take his people and that work is going to be done by the Holy Spirit and take his people out of the world of sin before the son of perdition could come. And we have not been taken out of this world. We are still here. But there's one thing that I keep encouraging believers that as long as we are here, we should remember who, who we are and how God manifested his light in us. So as long as we are here, we are the light of this world. And as long as we are here, we are the light and the light, the duty of a light is to displace darkness. That is why we believers are supposed to be so strong and powerful said that in this time like this, we should understand what the word of God says and we need not to be panicked. But we should stand in the power of his glory and be a light unto the darkness and tell the people who don't know Jesus and tell them what is happening. Some will believe and some will not believe. Because the mind of the world is set on so many things that they don't even recognize that there is God. And they don't, so many, many people don't even believe that there is God. Now, God also want to prove to the world that he made it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'll show you something in the Bible. He want to prove to the world that he made it. And still, he's in control. And the world belongs to him. So what we need to understand here is that those who are saying that the Antichrist has come and Antichrist, no, 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 no. No, no, Antichrist has not come. Do you understand what I'm saying? But we are the manifestations of Antichrist on this earth. But the Bible says, unless we are taken out of this world. But since we are here, oh my God, the devil cannot have control over this world. And that is why I charge believers to know who they are and keep praying and talking to God in times like this. As a light, you're supposed to shine. Let me show you something about light. Now, if you want to get a light in your home, you plug the light to something. Do you understand? To an energy that supplies the light. Now, when you read the Bible carefully, Jesus made a wonderful statement. The Bible says that during the creation, during the creation, the Bible says God made a lesser light and made a bigger light, and the bigger light is the same. And you know that Jesus was trying to say that he is the light, and we also are the light, but we are the lesser light. We receive illumination from him. He is the source of power. So when we are connected to him, then we can shine. If we are not connected to the Lord, there's no way we can shine. That is why every believer needs to connect to the Lord and not any physical material or material things. You connect to the Lord and there comes a flow, a power from him flows through you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So 
It's about time for us to understand who we are and what we know and what we can do and understand times and seasons. When we understand times and seasons, we will not be moved by what we are hearing and what is going on. Because we are here. Because we are here. And because we are here, let's see what is happening. Now, because we are here, in verse 7, it will tell you something. It says, for the mystery of iniquity. The word already what? What is the mystery of iniquity? The mystery of iniquity is the manifestations of Antichrist. So you can hear the preparation. You can smell that he is coming. You can smell that the Antichrist is close. You can smell the sin and the things that goes on in this world. You can smell homosexuality. You can smell the filthy things that the world is doing. You can smell a man turning to be a, a woman and a woman trying to be a man. They are trying to change the order of God. You can smell that the Antichrist is coming. But he hasn't got that chance. Something is holding him. Something is holding him. That's the Bible saying that, that something is holding him. Something is holding him because we are here. You know, it's about time for believers to be proud about their God. And let the world know that we are somebody in him. And we don't belong to this place. Anyway, we don't belong to this place. As God gathered his people from Egypt. Do you understand? So is God going to gather us out of this world of sin. Mm -hmm. So there's coming a the gathering. You understand? So there's coming a the gathering. So God is going to gather us. And what that's what Paul was teaching about the gathering together. Or gathering together. So you see here that for the mystery of iniquity already work. It's already working. So sin is already, as I told you, it's already working. And people don't believe God. And I saw one video that it is on the bus in UK that there is no God. If there is no God, it will prove to you that there is God. Did you understand? And all those who say there is no God, God is going to prove to them that there is God. I know what I'm talking about. You see, a believer needs to draw close to God and understand the ways of God. A believer needs to draw close to God and understand the ways of God. And when a believer draws close to God and understands the ways of God, that believer will walk in purity and in the power of God's mind. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So here, look at something here. He said that the mystery of iniquity do it already work. Only he who that leader will later until he be taken out of the way. So it means that there is a restrainer. Do you understand? Now look at me and listen carefully. There is a restrainer who is holding on the works of evil because we are here. Now, I think you understand what I'm saying. Now there is a restrainer who is holding on the works of evil because we are here. And until he is taken up, there is no way the devil can have full control over this world. So every plan of the devil will become nothing. Every work that he plans to do will be nothing because God has some people here. And since God has some children here, God is not that cheap God. Now, for example, if I build my house, I've got the burglar to prove I put it in my house to prevent thieves. And we know that there are thieves on this earth and there's a particular thief called the devil. The Bible says he came to steal and to destroy. So you need to understand that there's no way God will build a vineyard and leave the vineyard just as it is. Lord will protect it and keep it. Do you understand? So as long as we are here, as long as we are here, there's a kind of protection even that the world is enjoying. Because things that are supposed to pull down the whole world would not because we are here. And we should understand the order of the world. And nobody should deceive you and nobody should panic. The order of the world is that after we are taken out of this world of sin, then the son of perdition will come and rule. That's what we call the Antichrist. He will come and rule. And the Bible says, then God, Jesus Christ, will come and arrest him, destroy him, and put him in that order. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So it means that it means that there is an order. And nobody needs to be afraid that the world is coming to an end now. We need to go. We need to go. We need to get out of this place. This place is on a whole. And you saw Israel. They left Egypt. God had a promise for them. He had a land for them. 
Jesus said, there are many mansions in my heart, Father's house, and I promise you, I'm going and coming back to take you to where I am, so you're going to be there also. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So Jesus Christ is coming to take us. That is our hope. That is our faith. And we believe in that. And those who don't believe in that, I say we believe in that. Do you understand? And whether you believe or you don't believe, it doesn't change anything. Yes. But if you don't believe, look at what is happening to this world. They have to prompt you that our Jesus promised that they're going to be pestilence in the last day. And that is what we are seeing today. Yes. Now look at this. And said that, and after we are taken, and then shall the wicked be revealed in verse 8. He said that then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. Amen. It said, verse 9, even him who is coming after the working of Satan with all power and sign and lying wonders are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. And lying wonders. Look at what's going to happen after we left. He said that. He said that. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You see that? Now, that is what we are doing now. We are preaching the love of the truth to people. We are telling them about Jesus. We are telling them about the word of God. But they wouldn't take it. But you know what they believe? They believe in lies. And because they believe in lies, God is going to destroy them. And God said, I will give them to lies. So it means that if God said, I will give them to lies, it means that those people will not go with us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Those people will be left on this earth. And when they are left on this earth, they're being left on this earth, you know what's going to happen? Then the deceivable spirit will come and take them on. Because when the truth was available, they did not take it. And I keep telling believers all the time that this is about time. Your anointing is the Holy Spirit. Your anointing is not oil. Your anointing is not water. Your anointing is not any material thing. Your anointing is the Holy Spirit. Now who do we follow? We follow Jesus Christ. And as we follow Jesus Christ, his anointing is supposed to come upon us. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the Bible says how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, going about doing good, and healing all manner of sicknesses. So in other words, it means that the anointing of Jesus is supposed to come upon us. Because we are the follower of Jesus. And the Bible says his anointing has affected us. So what kind of anointing are we talking about here? It's the anointing of the Spirit of God. It comes to stay in you, is poured on you, God for you, God with you, and God stands for you. That is the anointing as God. But we are not connected to the anointed. That is the power. That's why we cannot shine. The illumination comes from the Holy Spirit. And then the light is not connected to it. Now, there's another way to light. We need oil. Now, if the oil is not in the light, or uh, it can be any type of oil that brings fire or bring light. Now, if that oil is not in the light, it cannot manifest. The light cannot manifest. So the oil in the light is the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life to keep you going, to make you so strong. The Holy Spirit speak, oil can speak, water can speak. The Holy Spirit protect, oil can protect, oil can speak. You see that? The Holy Spirit direct and conform and teaches about all teachings. The reason why the children of God today is so dull and dumb is that they don't receive the Holy Spirit to direct them, to teach them. They receive material things like water, like oil. And that is why we are falling apart. But we need to be strong and understand where we're coming from. Our anointing is our, is our oil. Our anointing is the Holy Spirit. Then we need to be strong and understand where we're coming from. So you see that the Bible says many will be deceived in verse 11. And for this God, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Do you understand? God shall send them what? Strong delusion. And they should believe a lie. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now look at verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. But has pleasure in an unrighteousness. You, you, you see that? You can see the act of believers today, even the act of pastors today. 
that they don't have pleasure in the righteousness of God at all. They have pleasure in themselves. What they want, what they're looking for. And too many things happening in the church. And we are exchanging our spiritual anointing to the physical, with the physical anointing. We are trying to get the physical anointing and ignore the spiritual anointing. And what you would you to say that the anointed of Christ. Today, Christ is our high priest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And since Christ is our high priest, we're supposed to flow with the anointing of our high priest, which is the Holy Spirit. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Now talk about the anointing of the latter. I, I love I don't anointed of the past. We saw that when Moses came down, God gave him. Uh, specifications to build, uh, to prepare uh, uh, holy anointing oil. Do you understand? When I get time, one day I'll talk about it. Now, this holy anointing oil that Moses prepared, God told him that this is throughout your generation. Do you understand? And he said it in the middle of Joel. He said that, but in the last day, I'll pour out my spirit. In other words, in the last day, the anointing will change. It's not going to be that which was poured on Solomon, that which was poured on David, that which was poured on the prophets. That would have fallen so no. It's going to be different. It said, now I'm, I, my spirit will come upon you. And that is what I'm going to pour my spirit in the last day. We are in the last days. So we need to enjoy the, that part of the spirit which was brought by Jesus Christ. And Peter confirmed it. That this is the time, this is the hour. When they started speaking in tongues and the spirit of God, the spirit of God came upon them. Peter confirmed it. So this is the hour, this is the time of the spirit. And the Holy Ghost came upon them. They received a spirit of boldness and began to preach the word of God with a different dimension of power. And men without understanding understood God because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now all these things is taken away from the church. And the church is no longer depending on the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but depending on the anointing of the physical thing or material things, which were prepared by some people who were sometimes not all, even unbelievers. And we depend on it. How would it go for? Our light is cut off. Our source is cut off. And that's the main reason why Christians are afraid in this time. This is not a time for a believer to be afraid. But this is a time for you to rejoice that your God is coming soon. And keep praying and pray for the weak ones and minister to the weak ones. And even those who don't know God, you tell them of the love and kindness of God. So therefore they can join us. The boat is ready. Like in the days of Noah, the boat is ready. How many of our family members we are taking in? How many of our friends that we are taking in? We need to start announcing that the boat is ready and they should get ready to the boat. That's what we need to do. So this answer those, this answer those who think that um, um, the Antichrist has come. Hey, tell somebody, since I'm here, he can't come. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Unless I've been taken away. And I repeat this statement in verse 7. I repeat it, for the mystery of iniquity do it already work. Only he who now later will later until he be taken out of the way. So when the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way and he will not go and leave us. You know why he will not go and leave us? Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will give you another comforter and the comforter will be with you forever. So if the comforter is living out of this world, he had to go with us. Yes, sir. So when he's taken away, he will go with us. And nobody will restrain the devil. Nobody will push the devil again. And nobody will tell the devil, hey, stop. No, nobody's going to tell the devil, stop. Now the devil will have some control over the whole world and take it to himself. And that's what the Bible says, the son of wickedness. That one is our back case. But let's pray that our boat is so big so we can get a lot of people or save a lot of people. Save your family, save other people. Tell somebody about Jesus. Because this is the time. We need to know. Now, I want to ask, answer another question. I want to answer another question. Now, some people are saying that this is a man-made something. Amen. Amen. Now, some people are saying that this is man-made. Now, even if it is man-made, let's put it this way. I'm saying that the world belongs to God, and God will not allow anything go on on this world without his consent. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, hey, listen to me. You can't come to my house and mess up without my knowledge. So you should know that the earth belongs to God, and the devil cannot do anything good, not bad. 
unless God permits him. Yes. We, have, we have the record of God permitting the devil many, 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 many times in the Bible. And at any time he permits the devil is for a reason. He permitted the devil in Job's life. Do you understand? And he permitted the devil in Peter's life. When Jesus said, the devil has asked for you, but I've prayed for you that after you come out of it, you can strengthen those who go through it. But I wanted to show you something in the book of uh, Isaiah. I want to show you something in Isaiah. The Lord made a beautiful statement in Isaiah and trying to tell the whole world of a message that people don't understand. It's a, it's a mysterious Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Are you there? Are you there? Yes. Isaiah chapter 10. I want to show you something there. I want to read only, I want to read the verse 5. And listen to what God is saying in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 5, 6, verse 5, and says, He said, Oh, I save me, the rod of my anger, and the staff in their hand is my indignation. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Yes. I will listen to this. I will send the Assyrian to him or send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to strike them down like the man of the streets? You see that? Yes, sir. He said, oh, Assyrian, the rod of my anger. Now, you study about Assyria, the difference between Assyria, Assyria is the city. But God started using the Assyrian, it's a figurative speech. Do you understand? It's representing something that I want you to know. Now, you see that uh, Israel went to Egypt. And in Egypt, there, were, there, there was no Assyria there. In Egypt, it was between Pharaoh and then the Israelites. Then, after God defeated the powers of Egypt and brought his people out, then the prophet said that, my people, said the Lord, went to Egypt to sojourn there, but the Assyrian oppressed them without a cause. The Assyrian oppressed them without a cause. So, who is the Assyrian here? Do you understand? Now, I want you to know that Assyrian is a man in authority, a man in control, a man who is having power over a position or a place. That is Assyrian. And God said, Assyrian is a role of my chastity. And the staff in his hand is talking about two things the staff in the hand. Of the Assyrian is my indignation. Now watch it. He said that I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. It means that when God go crazy about people who will not worship him, who will not respect him, who will not regard him, he will use your own people to discipline you. That's what he called Assyrian. The work of an Assyrian. Now, it was Pharaoh that dealt with Israel. But why did the prophet say that the Assyrian oppressed God's people without a cause? The symbolic name that uses a man authority who are oppressors already. Now, I want you to know something. That verse 7 it said, How be it, he meaneth not so. Not that the word is hard thing so, but in his heart to, to destroy and cut off nation, not a few, many. So it means that the Assyrian itself 
has an evil in his heart to do evil. But he will not do it unless he give him the opportunity to do it. And that will be done against nations that are strong. That will not take the word of God. And that will not act upon his word. Now, so, now, I cannot say this boldly that when people are saying that it's man-made, as some people are saying that uh, Bill Gates and then uh, some men in authority, they are serious. They are serious. And those Assyrians cannot work, cannot take over God's world without God's consent. And when the Assyrian is acting, God said, I will send the Assyrian. So when the Assyrian is acting, what is in his heart? God can stop it and God can allow it. Depending on the nature of the people in that country, in that nation, in that city, and in the world. Now the whole world is in his head. And then he sees destruction and people living a wayward life. And do you know kind of filthy nakedness in the street without shame? Mocking and speaking against God. And even calling Jesus a homosexual. Do you think you go scot free? No, those who think they will go scot free, they are wasting their time because they don't understand God. They don't know. They don't know who God is. Because the first time I heard people calling Jesus homosexual, and then they said one thing again. They, they, they said that he is gay. And when I heard it, I wept and I cried. God, I said, God, what did you do anything? We didn't you do anything? Because sometimes we need to let the people know that there is God. Because he said, I'll draw a demarcation line between my children and the children of this world. And believers need not to be afraid. No. It's only the death of a fool that God loses. But the death of a righteous, God doesn't lose anything. Because absence in the body, presence with God. But I tell you the truth, God will not destroy the wicked together with the righteous. He will not do that. Sometimes we look at somebody, we see how so outward we think that the person is already, but we don't know what he does in the secret. That's why we need to be so, so strong and be careful in our life and in our way of living as Christians. So let's say this, come, this is a man made. Let's say China made it. Let's say uh, G5 or whatever we call it, or 5G. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's say that. Now, they can be placed in the position of an Assyrian. There are men in authority. They are men who have an authority on the air. And they can oppress you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God will keep quiet. Because God said that there's already that evil in the mind of such people. But they cannot do it unless God pushes them or allows them to do it. Now I will show you something in the Bible. I will show you something in Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. That I'm going to end here. Let's go to Jeremiah. I'll show you something in Jeremiah. I'll show you something in Jeremiah. I'll show you something in Jeremiah. Are you there with me? Yes, sir. Now, let's read Jeremiah chapter number 9. Chapter number 9. And I'm reading. I'm just, I want to cut off time. I want to save time. So, I want to read from 21. Verse 21. That is. For death is come upon us. Sorry. For death is come up into our windows, right? Yes, and is entered into our places yes. to cut off children. Listen to this: to cut off children without, and the young men from the street. You get it? You get it? Yes. Death is coming. To cut off children without and men from the street. Now, when many streets are empty now. And what, what is the cause? The death that is causing that one. And you see that many streets are empty now. Now, this is, listen to, not that you listen to the prophet, you know what's going on. That's why I said, believers, this should not come to us as a surprise because we'll be reading them. You see that? And then he said in verse 2. The conclusion of the verse, uh, sorry, in the conclusion of verse 21, he said that, and the young man is cut off from the street. They don't, they don't go to the street again. Mm -hmm. yes, now, and he said this one, speak, thou say the Lord. Even the carcass 
of the men shall fall in the dark upon an open field. You see many people died on the streets. You see that? It's just they would die in an open field. And their carcass will be seen by everybody. But watch this. He said that even the carcass of men shall fall in the dark upon the open field. And as the handful after the harvest man, and none shall gather them. Listen to this word. And none shall gather them. It means that they would not get a defeating barrier. They would not get it. We see many times in videos where people are pushed together and then they are bound. You see many times people are disposed and streets and other things. That is what he's saying. It's a prophecy of the last time. And that's what we're seeing. And the Bible says that no, none of them, none of them, none of them will be guided. No man cannot gather them. We cannot go and take our, 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 our body, the carcass of our brother, the carcass of our sisters, the carcass of our fathers, and say we're going to, we're going to, we're going to bury them. We can't. We can't gather them. And they're going to be brought together and be, and be on the street as a as something we can already talk about here. But we are seeing it, so I need not to talk about it too much. Yeah. Now look at that. The next thing that, that is terrible here. Thou say the Lord, in verse 23, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That's why I'm warning those who think they know, the scientists and the people who think they know and think they've learned a lot that when we talk about Jesus, when we talk about God, when we talk about the anger of the Lord, they say, snub you. They don't take our word seriously. And somebody even said that, what do you have to pray? Wait and see what is going to come upon you. In this time, you don't speak against God. When you speak against God, his anger will come upon you. We should tell the truth to the people to know and to understand the truth. And then he said that thou say the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the, let the mighty man glory in his might. You see, so many people are dying than those who are strong and those who are weak and those who think they are somebody's and those who think they are nobody's. And every man is dying, even the man with wisdom, good doctors are dying. You know, this is not a time to rely on your knowledge. This is not a time to rely on your wisdom. This is not a time to say that I'm somebody, I'm rich, I'm that, I'm that, and that. This is not a time for that. This is the time for something I'm going to tell you. Now, he said that. He said that. Mighty man glory in his mind. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory, glory in this. The one who want to be glorified, or the one who want the glory, that want to take that joy, that who want to talk about God and be happy, let it be this person. Now let him be this, that he understand God. Do you understand? Yes. And knowledge, or not know him. So God said that, let it be that, the one that understand me, that I am the Lord. Look at God's position. I want you to take this seriously. Look at God's position. I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in work, yes. in the earth. So nobody should tell me that anybody at all can have that right to kill the whole world. The whole world is under his authority. It's not that cheap God. Who allowed this thing to happen? But our wickedness and our sins. That's why he allowed those things to happen. So he said, I bring down judgment on the earth. And I want everybody to know. And the one who's supposed to glory should know that this is what I do. I am God. You see, I've been telling believers that God wants recognition. God wants recognition. You know what he did in Egypt? I love that one so much. He, when he went to Egypt, when God went to Egypt, he said, I want to demonstrate my powers to Egyptians for them to know that I'm God. And to the Israelites, he said, I want you to know that I'm God Almighty. Do you understand? The God of your fathers are come to take you. So if that power is behind you, who can be against you? And then, then he turned against Egypt and demonstrated his power. And Egypt got to know that he is God. Now, there's one amazing thing that's beautiful here. When God was bringing his people out, I want those who don't believe now to get ready for this one. 
Now, when 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 God was bringing His people out from Egypt, now it's not everybody that is in Egypt is an Israelite. I'm talking about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Now, when they were coming out from Egypt, all the nations were afraid of Him because they heard what God did. So, if you are here and you're not afraid of God, get ready. They're going to consume you, like in the days. If this one does not consume you, another one will come and consume you. Because we have series of things that are coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Now, when they were coming, all the nations were afraid. And when they got to the final destination, when they got to uh, the promised land, before entering to <coughs> the city of the latter, you remember that city, Jericho? Mm -hmm. You see that? Before they went there. Now, they went to spy, and they met a woman called Rahab, the prostitute. Do you understand? He did not go to Egypt. He was not born there. He was not part of them. But she became part of them by faith. Why? Because he saw the power. He saw the presence of God upon them. He saw that this is the end of God. So he said that your presence has fallen on us. And we have heard that you are coming. And all of us are afraid of you. Do you understand? So he got herself prepared. And then push out of unbelief and believe the God of Israel. And when she believed the God of Israel, she was saved and the household was saved. He was not an Israeli. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And then she was a prostitute, a condemned person. Everybody looked down upon her. So I just want to chat those who people look down upon you and think that you are nothing and you are nobody. You are unbeliever, you are faulty. It's time for you to turn on to the Lord. Do you are not part of the church, but you can be part of the church when you are ready. By believing and know that what is happening is the hand of God. The woman saw that what is happening is the hand of God. So, so make a decision. So that's why we need to make a decision when we see something and say, this is the hand of God. Let me run and join them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Anyway, God is going to take us out of this world of sin. And let's read something here. But he said that, he said that, in these things I do delight, said the Lord. He said, he take delight on those who understand him. Do you understand what I'm saying? He take delight in those who know his ways. He take delight in those who know that he is God. And nothing can happen on this earth without him. Mm -hmm. So even if it is, it is a man-made, he's an Assyrian. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And a servant can be permitted by God. You remember when Jesus Christ stood before Pilate? They can't kill Jesus. No man on the earth can kill him. So Jesus, when Pilate said, I will set him free. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said that you can set me free and you don't have power over me unless that power is given to you from a man. Mm. So God gave Pilate the power to kill Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? So things that happen on this earth, if the hand of God is not in it, it will not happen. And when it is negative or evil or death, then we should check our life that there's something wrong with us. That's why God has allowed that thing to happen. So I'm not answering the three questions. And I want you to know that all pointing out to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you would change your ways and walk the way God is expecting, you will escape. You will not gnash your teeth. The glory of God will set you free. All what you need to do is to make up your mind and change. Let me conclude this. In verse 25, it said, Behold, the day is coming, say the Lord, that I will punish all men which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Do you understand this statement? He said, It means that a time is coming that I will punish the whole world. Both the Jews and the Gentiles. The circumcised are the Jews and all circumcised are the Gentiles. I'll punish them. He said, Why am I going to punish them? Now let's, let's study. Why is he going to punish them? Look at what he said. I'm going to punish them. He said in verse 26 Egypt and Judah and Eden and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the white uttermost corner. That is to say, wherever you are on the earth. Do you understand? Othermos Conan, that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations 
are on the set on the what? Are what? Uncircumcised. And all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. So now you understand the reason why he's going to punish everybody. The reason why he's going to punish Israel, the reason why he's going to punish everybody is that all the people are uncircumcised in the heart. So now he's talking about the heart. Uncircumcised, uncircumcision in the heart was preached by Paul. And Paul may declare in the New Testament that it's not by physical circumcision. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? My God is looking up to the circumcision of the heart in this last day. What is the meaning of that? That you will repent from your heart and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. And when you do that, God will not punish you. And then when you take up Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, not just that, but you determine to leave all evil and all that you've been doing that is not right. There's something God has placed in man. When you are doing all that which is not right, you know, but only that you don't have control over it. But today, when you accept Jesus Christ and say, Lord, take over me, you have control over it. And God will give you the spirit. We call the Holy Spirit. We call the Comforter. And the Holy Spirit will be with you forever. And he will strengthen you and guide your step that it shall be well with your soul. So I recommend to everyone to join the Lord, take the hand of him, and then be in good relationship with God. And it shall be well with your soul. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you.